Hi everyone, this is Lesson 7 from Chiasmus class. Uh, we're going to be discussing the Doctrine and Covenants today. Uh, this is quite a bit different from my other classes. Um, today we're going to be going through Section 76, and um, in real time, I'm going to be showing you what I look for when I'm trying to find Chiasmus from scratch. So I found this website at the bottom very interesting. Uh, DavidGorton.com, he talks about how Section 76 has 11 different chiasma uh, apart from a non-chiastic introduction, verses 1 through 4, and a non-chiastic conclusion, verses 108 through 119. Other than that, there's 11 chiasms within that. Now, in no way is this conclusive. In fact, in class, we found that none of us agreed exactly or found the exact same ones that he was finding. Um, but we all found different ones. So I'm just going to go through and, and show you this process, what we came up with, and um, uh, kind of go from there. All right, so uh, the website for the church, the Church of Jesus Christ, uh, .com or .org was not working for me today. I don't know if there's been some glitches on it. So here's a, a backup way to look at the scriptures. And um, it's scriptures.nephi.org. So if you scroll down, we're going to be in Doctrine and Covenants. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 76. And I am going to copy and paste all of these into a Word document. All right, so once we've got that copied and pasted in here, uh, from his notes, it says that one through four was, was non-chiastic. So I'm gonna go in here at verse five, and I'm on a Mac. Um, you can look up what the, the Windows alternatives are, but I'm gonna hit Command Enter so that that pops down to a new page. So each chiasm is going to have a page break in between it to, to make it uh, flow a little easier uh, so we can look at it. So, um, going back to what he said uh, there was, let me go back to the PowerPoint. I'm just gonna be writing down all these really quick. Okay, 10 has, it's a three element chiasmus. So A, B, C. B, A, two element parallelism in the internal chiastic elements. So A, B, C, C, A, B, A, B. <clears throat> All right, so he said that we are looking for um, a chiasm from verses 5 through 10. So again, I'm going to put my cursor here by 11 and do a command enter so that we're just looking at 5 through through 10 for our purposes right now. Um, separate it out. And what I'm going to do first is go through and read the whole thing and see if there's anything that stands out as a repeat. So for thus saith the Lord, 
I, the Lord God, am merciful and gracious unto those who fear me and delight to honor those who serve me in righteousness and in truth unto the end. Great shall be their reward and eternal shall be their glory. And I will reveal all mysteries, yea, all the hidden mysteries of my kingdom from days of old and for ages to come. Will I make known so that... Um, make known and reveal seem to be kind of parallels there will make known unto them the good pleasure of my will concerning all things pertaining to my kingdom yea even the wonders of eternity shall they know uh, maybe not maybe that they shall know is more fitting with make known. We'll, we'll kind of see. They know. And things to come will I show them. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So show and reveal and make known and shall they know are kind of matching pairs there. Yea, even the things of many generations. All right, so we've got many generations. And the days of old for ages to come. And their wisdom shall be great. We had a great up here as well. And their understanding reached to heaven. And before them the wisdom of the wise shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent shall come to naught. For by my spirit will I enlighten them, by my power will I make known unto them the secrets of my will, yea, even those things which I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor yet entered into the hearts of man. Um, seems like if he told us that it, there, it's from verses 5 through 10 that there should be something else, because we're not finding anything in 5 and anything in 10, so let's look and see uh, what might be there the Lord merciful and gracious unto those who fear me and delight to honor um it it's kind of a, a far reach but delight and in light So what I'm doing, especially when things don't exactly have a direct correlation or direct parallel, it might be kind of a play on words or things. So I'm looking for that for by my spirit. Is there anything that might match that up there? Um, for thus saith the Lord. I mean, he does. Whenever there's a thus saith the Lord, that's an oracle. That's the beginning of an oracle. And so, for by my spirit, the oracles are given through the spirit. That might be a correlation, but it, it seems kind of odd. I haven't found that a lot with chiasmus. So, the next phrase down below in verse 10, by my power. Is there anything else that by my power does? And you could kind of put that righteousness and truth, but... That's kind of a stretch as well. Uh, make known to them the secrets of my will. There's not anything about secrets up in verse 5. Yea, even those things which I have not seen nor ear heard. So, like body parts, eyes and ears. Not really. Nor entered into the heart of man. So, the delight and enlighten is probably our best bet as far as that goes. So let's now take a look uh, at indentation as we go through. So if this is our five and 10, our, our ends of it, then let's go through and start indenting. So we're indenting great and great. And then here we have a whole bunch of stuff that's within uh, different verses. So, that's kind of tricky as we're indenting, but let's see. 
Shall they know? That seems to be a different thought. And will I make known? So let's get all of these over to where they belong. I mean, we, we can change this, don't worry about it. And then see if we need to indent even more or, or what we got. So we have this pair, this pair. So this seems like it needs to be indented more. Yeah, that seems to flow pretty good. Okay, so let's just read it from the apex working outward. And here it says, will I make known unto them the good pleasure of my will concerning the things pertaining to my kingdom? Yea, even the wonders of eternity shall they know. So that's very much uh, chiastic. Even if that's all we had, it says, I'll make these things known to them according to my will and pleasure. Yea, even the subject matter shall they know. So yeah, that, that makes sense as far as the apex there. Working backward, I will reveal and reveal it to who? Days of old and for ages to come. So here's, I will show many generations. And then here, great shall be their reward versus their wisdom shall be great. And then um, delight and enlighten. So let's look at the comparisons that, that are assumed in this chiastic structure. So we have delight. So he delights to honor those who serve him in righteousness. And here it says, by my spirit will I enlighten them. So enlightenment, he delights to enlighten. So he up here it says he delights to honor, and here it says that he enlightens. So enlighten is synonymous with honor. Which is interesting that that there's kind of a, a, a parallel there. Um, let's look um, down here, the great. Um, so their wisdom shall be great, and great shall be their reward. <clears throat> so here, if A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C, right? So great shall be their reward, but what's their reward? It says that wisdom shall be great. So wisdom is the reward. So if, if we have a reward, there must have been something that we did to earn a reward, correct? So wisdom is not just something that's given, but it's given as a reward for something, which, which that's a, a new concept, um, and we could flesh that out kind of basing what this whole chiasmus is about, but that uh, the reward, uh, wisdom, needs to be earned. It is given because he's the only one that can give it, but we have to do something in order to earn that specific reward. So it kind of falls back to an eternal law. There, there's some sort of law that we're not going to get wisdom until we've earned it. And what is this wisdom that he's going to bestow? Verse 7, And to them will I reveal all mysteries. Yea, even hidden mysteries will I make known to them of my kingdom from days of old and for ages to come. So if we earn this reward, he will reveal all mysteries. Now, this kind of comes to a principle of do you have faith that the prophets of old received all the mysteries? And is God a respecter of persons? So if he's going to reveal to the prophets all the mysteries, will he not reveal them to you? Or better yet, can he reveal them to you? Because verse 7, and to them... It's not just talking about the prophets. It's talking about um, all those that 
that earn this reward that he's talking about. So we can have all mysteries, even hidden mysteries of the kingdom, of pretty much all, well, not all dispensations. It says many, many generations, days of old and days to come. So past and future mysteries. So if we weren't looking at this chiastically, that would be a foreign concept. But here we have it spelled out almost plain as day that wisdom is a reward and the wisdom that he's wanting to give us is all of the mysteries of the kingdom. He will do it by his spirit and it's a process of enlightenment and he delights to give it. Very interesting. All right, so let's take this exact same um, chiasmus and apply it a different way that, that we did in class. So I'm going to undo everything I've got here. And no color. Pop back the indentations. All right, now let's highlight it and bold it like other people in class did. So this one I'm just giving um, to you because they bolded and underlined different things. Make known according to my will. Wisdom shall be great. Understanding reach to heaven. So here's the, the things that they um, bolded to see as what was repeating uh, for them. And this one does fall more in line with what um, the original uh, finder that I, I was copying off of was finding. The ABC CBA pattern with C being a parallelism. So um, let's go ahead and, and start indenting things. Uh, putting things on different lines. Your understanding. So notice we're not using verses five and six with this one. Um, this one's kind of finding a, a different chiasm, a different way. All right, so let's see what kind of insights we get here. We have the hidden mysteries of the kingdom in verse 7, and then it's kind of describing what those hidden mysteries are at the end of verse 10. Even those things which I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man. And then the next step in, uh, there in verse 7, will I make known unto him the good pleasure of my will, so the good pleasure of my will and the secrets of my will are kind of different. It's a play on words, uh, substitution. <clears throat> the will I make known unto them what of my will? Here it's the good pleasure and here it's the secrets. So how is his good pleasure secrets? His good pleasure, as we found, is this the hidden mysteries. So kind of like where we talked about he delights in those things, it's his good pleasure to reveal secrets. Whereas if we're just casually reading this section, we read that I will make unto them known the good pleasure of my will. Yeah, it's a good phrase, but do we understand exactly what it means? 
if we're looking at it chiastically and looking at its match, the secrets. Secrets equal good pleasure. That's very interesting. All right, now let's look at um, the one that, that this other uh, Gordon guy found. So <clears throat> he labels his, his chiasms differently. He goes three, two, one, and then one, two, three, instead of A, B, C, C, B, A. All right, so as far as what we are practicing, writing, and speaking, this week, describe the temple experience in a A, B, C, D, E format, um, just like it's written there on, on the screen. Um, try to include parallelisms, but those parallelisms are at your discretion. If you choose not to include those, that's fine. But um, parallelisms could help you build the structure of that, that temple experience there. And likewise, the same pattern, A, B, C, D, E, but describe the plan of salvation. And, and that's the homework for this week. I hope that that was helpful, seeing some different examples and how different people are finding different chiasms within the same um, amount of verses and that it is highly subjective, but through different people's chiasms, their findings, we're able to get new meanings, new word associations that we might not get otherwise if we hadn't been looking chiastically. All right, have a great week.